Hello there! Welcome to my new tutorial about hospitals and dwarf fortress. In this one, I'm going to explain how to set up a hospital, how to make it run, what you require for it, and what to pay attention for. Also, there's going to be a couple of little tips and tricks that will help you optimizing your hospital quite easily. All right, so let's get started. I don't think I need to explain that much what a hospital is good for, so this video we're going to skip that introduction a little bit. Of course, your wounded dwarves will get their wounds treated there, obviously. So to make that happen, we announce a meeting area inside there, and we transform that meeting area into a hospital. So once that's done, you notice that you cannot do anything until you have assigned a chief medical dwarf. You do that in the nobles and administrators menu and you assign the dwarf and job's done. The thing here is the chief medical dwarf is more of a cosmetic title. It basically enables you to fulfill the job, but he, the chief dwarf, medical dwarf does not really do any work on its own. The only two things he does is he enables you to configure your hospitals correctly and you can see a little bit more of information here in the health tab. That's all. So to make this actually a hospital, you see here in the screen there's a lot of requirements. We go over these step by step. Let's start with the furniture. So, necessary furniture for your hospital is definitely a bed, because you need some place to store for your wounded to rest at. Store is the wrong word. You need a table for the operations. And you need a traction bench for dwarfs that need to be resting in a for a longer period of time so severe bone injuries and stuff like that the traction bench can be made at the mechanics workshop so in case you never made one here at the mechanic and it requires mechanisms and a table the these items here are all items to treat your wounded the next thing we require is a chest to store the medical supplies in, because without a chest, your nobody will get the items noted here into the hospital. So the chest is really mandatory. Once these things are all set up, you will have the utmost basics in terms of furniture down for your hospital. But we're not done here. So as you see here, I want to go on over the items here next. There's a couple of items. The number in the brackets is the ordered number and the first number is the actual amount locally stored at. So our hospital requires thread, that's for stitching wounds, cloth, that's for bandages, splints, that's for tending broken bones, crutches, well, I think you can already think what they're good for, cast powder, well, that's for broken bones as well. Splints and uh, powder casts go hand in hand. You can also substitute one with the other. Buckets are necessary for water and also for applying powder casts. And soap is important for keeping the wounds clean. So these items are all very important except for the powder for casts because that can be... A lot of people actually forego the powder casts totally and only use splints. So... Let's talk about where to create these things. Thread is made out of plant fiber or animal wool. Cloth is uh, basically processed thread. Splints can be made at the metalsmith or at the carpenter, just like the crutches. Cast powder can be made at the kiln out of certain stone types. That's alabaster and gypsum and all these, basically everything that has make plaster powder behind it. And then we got buckets. Well, these can be made out of wood or metal as well. And soap is made at the soap maker. If you struggle with making soap, there's two easy ways to do it. Method one would be to get it as an embarkation thing because you can con configure what you're embarking with and you don't need much. I'm going to cover that in a second. Or you set up a soap maker you slaughter one animal, transform that into tallow, make yourself some lye at one of your um, wood furnaces, and then you can craft yourself a very low amount of uh, soap. Why is that so important? Because soap is not necessary in large quantities here. 
most items are not necessary in large quantities here. That's a very uh, confusing thing. And please let me know in the comments if this ever got fixed in between. But according to the Dwarf Fortress Wikipedia, thread, cloth, and uh, powder and soap are stored in here in different numbers than they are in your stockpile. So here's the numbers. If you... One unit of thread in your stockpile translates to 15,000 units of thread in the hospital. Sick, isn't it? Cloth is, the, is similar. One unit of cloth in the stockpile, 10,000 units of cloth in the hospital. All right? So splints and crutches, they don't work like that. They get, well, because they're exactly numerical things. And cast powder and soap are 150 units per stockpile unit. So if you have one unit of soap in your stockpile, you can have 150 treatments of soap in your hospital. That's why low numbers suffice. All right, so enough of all this detail. Let's get, let's get over to the actual workers in your hospital. The doctor does the work of a diagnostician and a surgeon at the same time. So doctors are doing two jobs at once. Diagnosticians and surgeons are then again the split up version of that. Diagnosticians are among the most important people in the hospital because the basic rule of thumb is no diagnosis, no treatment. So if your dwarves are dying untreated, that might be because you don't have enough diagnosticians. So personally, I always try to have a bit more diagnosticians than I have everything else. And I think the surgeon and the bone doctor go without saying. So your standard fortress can totally ignore the surgeon if you have a really good doctor and apply some more diagnosticians and one bone doctor. It, of course, is always a question of how many people do you have? How often do injuries occur? That's a lot of things that you can configure on the side. It's really worth stressing out, though. No diagnosis, no treatment. And if that happens, your dwarf will just die, even if there is an entire hospital right next to him. So, now to the last couple of requirements that are a tad bit obscure. Your hospital needs access to water. But that's not only to wash the wounds, that's also because wounded dwarves won't drink booze. Yes. So, if your if you're dwarves are thirsty in the hospital, they need to have water. So make sure that you have access to some water. Ideally, your hospital is built right next to a fountain. It's very important though to stress out your water source. No stale water, because stagnant water is bad for your wounds. An aquifer water source or a river water source are pretty good in that regard. And it's a rumor. I don't know if it's right or wrong. Please feel free to drop me comments down there. Mud-laced water is supposedly also bad, but I have no confirmations about that yet. So, and with all that set up, your hospital is actually ready to get on going there. So, there's nothing more to explain. But here's a couple of helpful little tips and tricks that will get your hospital a little bit smoother. So, first off, I want to talk about something you can make in the labor menu. So, when you add a new work detail, and check out healthcare. Here's the points of feeding patients and recovering wounded. If you make a new job profile that's exactly tailored to this and you configure it to only select to do this, what happens is your work detail will free up your doctors because your doctors will no longer be allowed to do all these things and focus on the important things. Just keep uh, attention that you have enough people assigned to that job, because this way you can free up the tab of your doctors a little bit. And the next one is for focusing which dwarf shall get treated, because there is a tendency for your dwarves to treat not the most important person first. That's a bit of a shame, isn't it? So you can do a little bit of a trick here. I don't like that my dwarfs are ignoring the top-notch priority here, but some imagination has to do. You can put in a bed back there, so if this was carved out, and then put a door in there. Every door can be marked as forbidden. So basically when you have, now we imagine that we have three rooms here, and we have three different patients 
we could now seal off the doors of the least important patients to force our medical staff to just have one door available to treat their patient at. This way, you can funnel the attention of your doctors to a certain, to a certain thing, and that's really, really powerful to do. And uh, another last thing that you can do there is try by all means to get yourself a well or a other water source right next to your uh, hospital. I have already mentioned that a minute before, I know, but this is basically the, the best way to make your hospital more efficient. That's why I mentioned it twice. And as a last thing, you can also specify your hospital as its own borough. So a borough is a specific zone where your people are not allowed to work ever anywhere else. Basically what you can do this way is assign a zone where your doctors will permanently be at. So make a borough out of your hospital, assign the doctors to it, and this way your doctors won't have any chance to meander around the fortress. It's just important that if you do this, to uh, include into this new founded burrow food and a place to rest for the doctors because they will need their time as well. This little burrow trick there is really grand if you have some emergency and you need your doctors there and they just decide to be at the tavern or, or whatever. This works quite nicely. And as a last thing that I found quite useful, you can also suspend the activities in a zone. Many play players suspend the uh, hospitals entirely until they are used or necessary. This is because your people will frequent those beds if they are not used. And there's uh, nothing worse than a hospital filled with migrants or other people chilling out in the bed and uh, blocking it for the people that actually need it. Alright, so I hope you found that helpful. Feel free to leave me in the comments what kind of cool ideas you have or add in things that I might have forgotten. I'm always happy to hear from you folks and of course leave a thumbs up on that video if you enjoyed and consider subscribing. There's daily videos coming up from my side and if you like that one you might like the other stuff as well. And in the description box you will find a link to the entire playlist of my Dwarf Fortress tutorials. So. You might want to check that out as well. Have a wonderful day and see you guys next time, I hope.